Good morning. Welcome to my teaching learning session. Today we are going to cover the HGL 136 English at work text. So we have already started with this last time, block one. And today we are going to continue further. So let's look at unit one, which was uh, profiling oneself for the job. So if we have to revise what we have done already and also to add few new points, what does profiling oneself for the job entail? So you remember that we talked about how um, there are two ways of writing profiles, right? One you have to write for yourself. That would have a different approach, but when you're writing it for somebody else, that would entail another completely different approach. However, the content would be more or less similar because profiling someone would include um, important, the pertinent details about their personal um, details, like their name, their profession, uh, but mostly it would uh, focus on virtues which are helpful, instrumental in their professional uh, endeavors and their professional achievements. So when you are creating the profile for somebody, the difference, primary difference would be that you need to gather a few details. Okay? Uh, when we are writing about ourselves, we are very well aware of our plus and minus points. But um, when we are writing it for somebody else, then we need to depend on the data that has been provided to us or the observations that we made. Um, there is a lot of guesswork involved in it, right? So let's look at the qualities which are necessary at workplace. So personal qualities like hardworking, creative. So that what are the qualities which are necessary at workplace? So primarily they would be uh, divided into three categories. First would be personal qualities, second would be social qualities, and third would be professional qualities. What does personal quality involve? Uh, for example, somebody is hardworking, creative, disciplined, open-minded. These are traits which are seen as personal qualities. Then you have social qualities. Now, what does social quality entail? It's if somebody is friendly, somebody is soft-spoken, helpful, they have the ability to empathize, right? So these are traits which are um, helpful in any kind of social uh, circumstances, not just professional. If you have these qualities, you'll be socially uh, more acceptable or more, um, uh, more uh, appealing to the people around, right? So first is personal qualities and personal qualities, these are uh, these are qualities that help you in your professional life, but also it uh, it enables more productive involvement and um, a better sense of being. You know, uh, personal qualities uh, ensure that that you have more fulfilling sense or fulfilling. Uh, experiences with anything that you do doesn't mean only professional activities. Let's say it's your day to day uh, activities or your time with your family or your friends. Um, if you have these personal qualities, you are able to uh, experience a better quality of life or a better quality of experience for that matter in these uh, situations, you know, whether it is personal, whether it is social. So um, these personal qualities as well as social qualities, these add to your dimensions as a professional being. Uh, these qualities, uh, if not directly contributing to, to the professional space, this uh, enables your personality to be more enriching, more fulfilling, uh, more uh, more facilitating to the growth and to the output which is being delivered by you as well as those around you because you create a better environment, a more productive and enriching environment that brings out the best 
not only from you but from everybody so personal and social qualities are uh, equally important when it comes to professional life uh, professional qualities which contribute directly to your performance so let's say somebody is uh, rude okay they are uh, uh, and they do not have the social abilities to empathize, to, um, you know, probably be very friendly. But uh, they are disciplined, they are focused, they are productive. So they are uh, ensuring productivity. Um, maybe not with the additional benefits that the personal and social qualities will uh, provide, will add. So professional qualities are very good if you have leadership skills that you're able to guide and mentor everybody around you better, you're a good team leader for that matter. Then conflict resolution. So let's say if there are, um, I mean, if you're working in the space where there are so many things that you're closely um, accomplishing together, there are bound to be conflict. Um, you know, um, conflicts would arise there. So conflict resolution, if you have the ability and one could have the ability to resolve conflicts without PC. They could, they don't really need to be very, um, you know, empathetic or very uh, friendly. And yet they might be very crafty at conflict resolution. Okay. So these are professional qualities, and it is a little, there is a thin line between how to differentiate between the qualities which are specifically, uh, you know, professional and the qualities which will fall under the domain of personal or social um, although they are like overlapping uh, so one helps the other you know, like helps this one. so uh, now uh, second uh, now you look at the words that we have used second point here is that vocabulary required at workplace so when you first we talked about the qualities which are necessary at workplace second you prepare yourself to for a new job or for a new workplace how do you um, ensure a smooth experience for yourself so first of all you include these uh, you know incorporate these uh, traits in your personality personal quality social qualities and professional qualities sometimes they can also be developed it's not necessary that one has to be born with it you develop it over a period of time now, uh, next is a vocabulary which is required at workplace. So, um, what, are the what are the words which are required? So, we have spoken earlier about how jargons, knowing the jargons is important. Um, so, although the use of jargons is not much appreciated when it comes to personal communication or social communication, but when it comes to professional work, you are expected to have a certain understanding of the words which are very specific to that field because uh, one cannot always translate it into a uh, common man's language or uh, cannot always simplify it for you uh, because there is a dearth of time because there are deadlines so one would prefer using those words and uh, you know uh, probably making the process easier and it is also expected out of you that you are aware of these terms. For example, uh, let, let's look at first of all what are jargons. These are specialized terminology which are associated with a particular field. So, for example, there could be legal jargons. Okay? So, let's say if you are working in the field of law, you have to know about terms, what is an alibi, and you know so many different terms, and you have to be aware of them. You can't be in the legal field and not, not know these terms or use layman terms. So that's a particular specialized knowledge or vocabulary that you need that is uh, expected out of you. The knowledge is um, inevitable, it is expected that you need to develop understanding and uh, um, expertise in those jargons. Okay. So jargons are not necessarily uh, do not they do not have native connotations all the time. Uh, similarly, if it comes to medical jargons, for example, these are very common terms. Usually, the patients also know them. For example, when you have the R written on the prescription, the chemist knows what it means or BDOD. So uh, 
Now, these are terms which even patients can't trust. There are so many other terms that people use, uh, doctors or the medical practitioners, they use uh, in their own um, domain uh, in order to communicate with each other. I mean, what they write on the prescription is essentially a communication between the doctors to the patients or by the medical practitioners to the patients that involves chemists, they understand and they are able to give you the medicines even if you do not understand the terms and they can explain it to you. So you see, uh, it is a certain communication that is taking place between uh, the doctor and the chemist um, through that prescription, by prescription, and you may or may not understand it and it is not even necessarily required out of you to understand it. You do, it is good because that will help you uh, take the medicine time, otherwise the chemist will just explain it to you. So these are jargons, uh, I mean, if the patient doesn't know, that's still all right, but the chemist has to know what that means, the, um, the doctor has to know what that means, right? So sometimes the knowledge of charms is important if the chemist doesn't know what those terms mean. Then he will not be able to uh, administer the medicines for me, right? So next is how to behave at new office or workplace. So you need to introduce yourself. How do you behave at new office or workplace? You need to introduce yourself. So the two uh, points that we have covered up to now are qualities which are necessary at a workplace are the law enforcement qualities, social qualities and professional qualities. Okay? Uh, secondly, we talked about vocabulary and uh, jargons, right? And why it is important for the people from a particular field, working in a particular field to be aware of the jargons or the terms which are specifically related to their field, right? Now, third is how do you behave at a new um, office or workplace? Uh, first point was about the qualities. Now, how do you behave? So, you are new at this place, and of course, you do not know the people so well, and they are all very familiar with each other. So, you are like the same musician. So, if you are uh, skeptical about how you are going to be received, and if uh, your reception is not very warm, Sometimes, you know, people who are already there to ensure that the person who joins feels welcome. But sometimes it might happen that the people who are already there might not be uh, that psychologically or socially sophisticated to ensure that the new member feels very welcome or they might be too busy for that. So in order, um, in such scenario, it becomes your own responsibility to take that lead and make the place of the ambulance comfortable to you. Make your rapport with the other colleagues uh, friendly, and you need to take that step. You need to initiate it. If it is not being initiated by people who are already working there. So what are the qualities that you need to have, or what are the things that you need to do? How do you uh, make it comfortable for you? You go and you introduce yourself. Take that lead. Go, talk to people, introduce yourself. Ask very well-timed questions. So what are the questions that you can ask? And uh, you get to know your team better, right? Try to remember names. Don't interrupt others. Get organized. Set good habits. So how do you behave at your new office or workplace? You introduce yourself. You ask well time questions, so how do you introduce yourself? That's, uh, I mean, it's easy to say that, you know, you go and take a leave, go and introduce yourself. But how do you exactly do that? That's the challenge. So how you do your, that is, you uh, approach someone who seems to be closely working with you. So you start with that person because you know that you're going to interact with this person more and you see that your interaction is higher with this person so it becomes inevitable. Um, you have to be on good terms with this person, on friendly terms, on a very amicable terms where you can uh, make them know a few things and you can learn things from them. Uh, because you know it takes time to understand the system. The first thing that you need to do is go observe what is happening and what are the dynamics around? Don't just go and, you know, put yourself out there instantly. Just observe and see what are the dynamics around. 
once they have understood the dynamics and see who are the people that you need to interact most with, start with the person that you are already interacting with. Uh, of course, you have gone ahead and introduced yourself and everything. That is the preliminary stage of, uh, of accommodating into a place uh, where you are going to be for a long time. The second step would be to observe and then see who are the people that you need to interact most with and then um, initiate more conversation with them. For example, uh, ask them their time questions. Do not seem like you're too interfering or do not interrupt them while they are speaking. Um, other than that, do not come across as a loud person, somebody who is trying to put themselves out there too much. Uh, that might intimidate the people around and that um, might put you in a bad light that this person is trying to overshadow the rest of the people or is trying to prove a point to some, uh, uh, prove to the, a point to the higher authorities. So one needs to be careful about others. Um, sensitivity or insecurities or something like that. So although it is not our responsibility to cater to people's uh, insecurities or to make them feel better, but it is always better to play on the safe side. I mean, why invite issues when, you know, uh, your main task is there in front of you. So do not invite unnecessary um, conflicts. Otherwise, even if you have the conflict resolution skills, a lot of time will be spent in um, invested in conflict resolution for your own self. Right? So uh, ask well done questions, get to know your team better. Try to remember names. Okay. Do not interrupt others. Get organized, set good habits. And um, Remembering names shows that you give importance to the other person, you see, and you do not interrupt others. That we have already covered when you're asking most people, you're asking them type questions which do not seem out of the place or out of context. Then you get organized and set good habits. Okay? Um, and you try to remember names because that makes people feel important. You feel like you, know, you care about them or you uh, take notice of them. And everybody likes being noticed. Everybody likes being acknowledged. So you take their names. Okay? And don't interrupt others. Get organized. Set good habits. But what do you mean by good habits? What are we talking about when you say good habits? It doesn't include you getting up and brushing your teeth or you know you, you are, of course those things are important as well but uh, when we talk about good habits at all these what are the things that you can think of so give it a thought and make a list think of all the good things that you can think of okay now let's see the good habits that we think that can be important at work First of all, being disciplined, the qualities that we discussed there, professional qualities, like leadership, conflict resolution, dedication, ability to meet deadlines, right? So these are the habits that people take note of. Let's say if you're talking to a colleague and you have given them a uh, deadline or you have promised that you'll be uh, delivering this uh, this data, this, uh, you know, uh, whatever task has been given to you, will be delivering it at a certain time. Then do it at that time, you know, do not uh, change that time, okay? So that's there, and then self-profile. So your name, age, date of birth, educational account. So if you're creating your self-profile, that becomes important. You need to, to know what are the things that you're going to involve in your self-profile, and what are the things that you're going to involve or include when you're talking about somebody, when you're filing somebody else, right? So let's say if you're talking about yourself, first we'll start with your name, your age, your date of birth, educational background, aspirations. What are the things that you want to do in the future? What are your achievements? Okay. What are the qualities that you have? Of course, the positive ones. You do start uh, dishing out your negative traits in self. And what are the hobbies that you have, right? So these are the things which go in self profile. And, uh, okay, so first of all, uh, one task for you is to prepare a list of the good habits uh, or the practices that um, you can incorporate in your personality. First, 
task from you is to write down the qualities from the personal qualities, social qualities, or professional qualities that will that you lack right now and that will enrich you as a person when you join a, uh, a workplace. So first you need to talk about that. And the second thing would be um, what is your field and what kind of vocabulary do you need to um, work uh, work on to have a better hold on the conversations or to the understanding and knowledge base. Third task is that you're going to write the good habits which are required at workplace. Okay, so what are the good habits that you can think of and you can again, incorporate in your personality. Now, uh, last would be you need to create your self profile. Okay, so that's uh, that's the take away from uh, whatever we have covered until now. These are four things that you need to do in your notebook. Okay. Now, searching for a job. So, what do you understand by career? A career is a course of successful activities, but uh, but how is career being taken today? Career refers primarily to bread earning activity. Okay? So anything that you do, any professional activity that you take up, which helps you uh, on your livelihood, that is seen as career, right? So that's the modern usage of the term. Uh, contradictory to how it was used earlier. So uh, you see. It has been estimated that one third of the vacancies for graduates are not advertised publicly. So when it comes to searching for a job, you need to understand that um, job market is very competitive, as particularly few fees, they're very competitive. So if they start uh, publishing the job, uh, job advertisements, it might uh, cause them a lot of uh, Trouble. So people sometimes some companies or some markets which are very competitive, they prefer not to advertise the jobs and they prefer the candidates to take that initiative, uh, find out when there is a vacancy and apply there. So why they do that? One is cost effective. Second thing is it helps them um, get those candidates who are really self-motivated and who really, really want the job and uh, that particular uh, job. And that's why they're really, uh, you know, they're putting in a lot of efforts to keep an eye, keep track the vacancies of that particular company and that particular designation. So it, autom it automatically does the filtering work for them, right? So, um, yeah, so it has been estimated that one third of the vacancies for graduates are not advertised publicly particularly in a competitive job market. And most employers actually expect applicants to take the initiative as it can be cost effective as well as a better pool of self-motivated candidates. So they do not have to filter out so many people, you know, a huge mass supply. They need to develop the task increases a lot, but if somebody is constantly tracking your uh, company profile, your vacancies, that means they know that they are best suited for that role and uh, the company also you know finds a better fit for them without putting in a lot of um, organized effort so a small number of well targeted applicants are most likely to produce results than mass media so sometimes what happens when the companies put out applications there will be a lot of applicants and um, most of them are not suited for the role or are not uh, motivated enough to uh, fulfill those responsibilities. And uh, also there's a lot of work for applicants if, you, if they just you know, post out resume everywhere. So it's a waste of posters, stamps. Uh, so now we look at role one. What are the goals? So when you go for searching job, so this is like understanding the market, what you should be doing, how should you apply. Now, uh, what are the goals that you should have and how you should proceed with this? First of all, is have some idea about the <coughs> world of jobs. Have some idea about the world of jobs. 
Secondly, know how to search for a suitable job. Okay. So first thing that you need to take care of, have some idea what the role of job is. You cannot just be a lost kid out there without having any amount of research or any amount of knowledge in advance about how it works. Like what we are doing right here is to create familiarity for you uh, or create a roadmap for you on how to proceed with this. Okay. So let's say we do not have the class, it would be a totally, you know, and if you are not communicating with your peers, if you are not having a systematic training that you do not get, so these classes become important, these sessions become important for you to understand how to approach um, these uh, little details while you are, um, you know, while you are in that stage to apply your uh, creative credentials for yourself, academic credentials, personal um, targets, professional targets. But how do you go about it? The challenge is to start. Okay? And when you start, um, you do not have anybody watching over you. So it's always better to be prepared in advance to have a certain um, preparatory level where you know how you are going to approach these things. So uh, first you need to have an idea about the world of jobs, right? So like we talked about how um, you should know about each other, how you should approach uh, new people at your workplace, how you should not uh, trickle in a negative uh, feelings in them and how you should go gradually about it, do not go and you know, start uh, be all over the place, how you should proceed with it, that you should be there, observe the dynamics, and then go ahead. So these are, you know, these are things that um, if you keep them in mind, you already are, uh, and you have already developed that state of mind on how to approach things, which is a very important training for anybody who is going to embark on a journey, on a professional journey for the first time. Right? and do not have any existing experience because experience is the best teacher but if you have not been out there yet then these uh, these guidelines you need to keep them in mind and you have to start preparing yourself uh, already so that you know by the time you enter that stage it's not so challenging for you it's not so overwhelming so whatever we are covering here whatever task that um, i'm telling you Please start uh, writing them down in your notebook and start uh, working on them already. This is a good time to start. The sooner the better, right? Do not wait for the last time because, you know, communication skills and all the traits which are required to perform well in the interview or even at the workplace, these are not a one-day exam where you can sit for one week and prepare for them. These are, um, these are traits, these are personality traits that you enhance that you develop that you grow um, over a period of time it is not one day job so if you start right now by the time you are out there by the time you are uh, required to use those skills you will you would have already instilled these uh, talents in you so please start taking these uh, notes seriously and start working on them not just taking the notes or not just preparing for the exam start imbibing them in your personality so that you uh, excel you have an upper edge as compared to the other candidates who are applying for the same position and the good time is to start right now so yeah so here's some idea about the world of job and go to this know how to search for a suitable job okay so uh, you have prepared yourself right you have uh, prepared yourself as a very good candidate as a candidate who will be an asset to any organization that they are going to join but how do you search for a suitable job because you might be an asset to the company that you join but what if the company is not an asset to you if they are their functioning is not good then your first experience might not be that enriching and you are going to uh, I mean, maybe you are going to own the payment, but you are not going to own a lot of expertise or experience in that field. There will not be a lot of personal growth in that uh, sense. So you also need to know how to search for a suitable job. Know how to write letters to find out about the job market. So think about 
uh, the letters that you write when it comes to personal matters. So nowadays we do not write a lot of letters. So it's more about emails. So if you're going to write emails, um, how do you write the emails? So there is a certain way in which you write emails. Emails are usually uh, professional anyway. I mean, for personal communication, we are using WhatsApp now. So just think about what is the perfect way of writing an email. And your task is to write an email applying for a job. Okay. So in this section, write down your task. It is to write letters to find out about, uh, write an email, not write a letter. Write an email um, to the employer, okay? Explaining why you are a good candidate for this job. Um, can you take a note of this and start, um, I mean, write it down in your task categories. This is something that you need to do. Okay. okay. So know how to write letters to find out about the job market. Now goal four is explore the internet for jobs. So uh, now these are the processes that you need to take uh, uh, take in charge at individual level. Now how do you explore the internet? How do you find the jobs? Because nobody is going to come to your home with the jobs in the um, you know sweet box and tell you that you know need you here in our company so what you need to do is that you need to go out there in, on the internet and explore now the problem with the internet is although we are lucky that we are living in that uh, time and age and stage where we have so much access to the information so easily so conveniently at the um, you know at our uh, at the convenience and comfort of our homes but at the same time it's very difficult because again there is a a uh, plethora of knowledge around and uh, information around and there is such an information room and you know you might just get overwhelmed with so many. So there has to be an organized um, organized technique that you adapt to. For example, if you are in a room and it's highly messy. So if you um, keep on looking at all the tasks, you know the hundreds of books and, uh, and the 10,000 clothes and the 5,000 eatables lying in your room, you would probably get overwhelmed with all that and you would not know where to start. Okay, so what you need to do is you need to have a strategy that, okay, first I'm going to start with this corner. In this bo box, I'm going to um, keep the clothes. In this box, I'm going to um, keep the books. In this box, I'm going to keep the eatables. In the other box, I'm going to uh, keep the documents or the papers, right? So uh, what happens when you organize things that it's less overwhelming and also it allows um, better segregation and um, better attainment, a better observation of what you have available. It's more organized. Like if you uh, remember in a few of the previous classes and other papers, I've talked about how to create a mind map. So what happens with a mind map? A mind map allows you to organize the information uh, and in pictorial form. So it is always better for human mind to capture that. So similarly, uh, with the room example, what I was trying to tell you is that if something is very, very overwhelming for you, you start by segregating, organizing, and uh, from one uh, step to next. Okay. So uh, now talking about how to do that for the jobs, first you need to uh, like take your laptop or a notebook or whatever you are comfortable with and create uh, sections in them, you know, probably, uh, I'm just giving an example, it is entirely on you how you go ahead with it. So let's say if you create a category saying, um, these are the most important jobs, okay. So first category and second category is, okay, interesting opportunities. First is most interesting, most lucrative opportunities. Second is um, interesting opportunities. Third is backup plans. Just an example, you can have your own plans. Then you look at the jobs and, uh, you know, you have few certain criteria that you need to write down for yourself. That what are the top four or five things that are important for you? Is it the payback rate? Is it, is it the distance from, um, you know, your home as in the locality? And uh, is it uh, the work hours, right? 
So all these categories, all these things which are four, five things which are priorities for you, according to that, you create these categories which are most, which are the best fit for you, which are medium fit for you and which are probably more like backup plans, right? So that's how you go about it. Okay, so maybe you can start doing that this already you know start looking at the advertisements because if uh, just when you need the job if you open the newspaper or you go on the internet you might not know how to uh, find your way navigate your way out of it so it's better that you start doing it already even if you're not going to apply start at least start exploring how um, you know the market is right now uh, for the jobs or uh, that you're seeking or for your for someone who is of your qualification level uh, what is the scenario in the market right now? And, uh, you know, just get an idea, get a get a hold over the market. And that will happen only if you explore and only if you delve into that field uh, or that, you know, that space. So uh, that's there. Uh, this is another task, fifth task for you. Um, you do not need to do it all today, but uh, do it over a period of time, uh, probably, you know, this month. All right. Now, fifth goal is to understand vocabulary which are associated with jobs. So now when you start exploring the uh, you know, job space, whether on the internet or in the newspaper, you will come to know that there are certain um, vocabulary, there, there are certain vocabulary which are associated, uh, which is associated with these jobs and you will become familiar with the pattern. Okay. So these are the important things I've given you five tasks for today. Let's, let's move to the next section. Now, if you're looking for a job, this is a solution or strategy that you need to. So right now we're talking about how to create your familiar familiarity, how to explore the job market. Uh, now we are going to look at the strategy, the systematic strategy that you need to take up. So if you're going to, see there is one way that, you know, you just wait for somebody to tell you that this job is available and because they are applying, so you also go and apply. There's another way that you're expecting that, you know, there would be uh, someone coming and telling you that there is this vacancy and then you'll apply. But if you're going to uh, adapt a very, um, you know, a very creative approach, a very enthusiastic approach, a very proactive approach, then uh, there is there are certain things that you need to undertake, you know, certain uh, strategy that you need to undertake. So most important thing, and that I've already hinted in the previous section, is research. Okay? So you need to go ahead and put in a lot of research to understand uh, what is the best fit for you, right? And I've already told you the process how to do that, and that was just an example. You can. Uh, innovate your own way to do it. So first is look beyond the recruitment sections of the local and nas national press to general news or business sections. So what the people do uh, generally, they look at the recruitment sections of the local and national press. So you know you have the newspaper and then you have the section which has the vacancies. So most people will just go there. What you can do and how you can create a difference here is that you go to the general news and business section okay now that you are at the stage where you're going to apply for jobs it is not sufficient to just be aware of the um, of the vacancies which are coming up you also need to be aware of the market trends so if you remember in the previous uh, session we had spoken about market trends right so you need to be aware of the market trends and how will that happen you are not always going to get a graph prepared or somebody coming and giving you a lecture on how what are the market trends going on but it's a day-to-day -day, uh, you know uh, update that you need to receive and for that what you need to do is you need to have be aware of the general news of the, the business section you need to see where is the market going what is happening so that will help you immensely in not feeling lost that will give you a grasp on how the economy is working how are uh, what are the dynamics in the economic space okay so 
that's very important. Second thing is research thoroughly. So what is the focus? Now this first having a general understanding and knowledge and expertise, right? Now important thing is what is the focus of individual companies? So this is you knowing about what is happening in the market. But what about the individual companies? What are uh, they looking for? I mean, if you're going to apply for a company, you need to look at what they are expecting out of you, right? And um, they would, uh, if they are going to pay a lot of money to their, uh, you know, to their employees or the person that they are hiring, if they are investing in that person, then there is a certain level of output and a certain level of skills that they are expecting. Okay? They are not just going to hire you because you have applied. They are going to filter out, choose the best candidate because they are going to invest their money and time in that particular candidate, right? So, uh, what is the focus of the individual company that you are applying for? That is very important. Uh, then third is, you need to build up a network of contacts and we all know the importance of networking. So, keep a record of your network and follow the time to time for job as personal contacts help immensely. So, you have developed a network but you need to build up this network of contacts. Keep a record of your network, okay? Follow them time to time for job as personal contacts help immensely. So you have this network, but you, if you're not going to follow them, if you're not going to maintain um, personal communication with them time to time, then uh, these personal contacts will, will slowly dissolve over a period of time. You cannot be like, you know, uh, today I have created this uh, di uh, directory and I've called these people and then I'll call them after two years. No, you have to uh, keep in touch with them um, and not disturb them or bother them, but in a very dignified uh, uh, way. You need to keep in touch with them because if you uh, develop these contacts uh, and if you keep a personal touch with them, uh, at the time of crisis, they will help you immensely. You have to let them know when you are looking for a job, if you are looking for it. And even if you are not, then also you need to keep these uh, connections alive because a lot never underestimate the importance of networking or the importance of having personal connections with people in your professional world. Doesn't mean you have to sit with them and counsel them or tell them your heartbreak stories or your life story. Doesn't mean that, but if you have to. Uh, establish strong bonds of trust, faith, inculcate a, um, a culture of empathy and helpfulness with them. And obviously, you know, if your personality is appealing, people are going to remember you and they are going to offer you help when you ask them for it. All right. So next point would be telephone before you call. Uh, so when you send the applications, make it a point that you also call these people, you know. Um, just sending the application is not enough. You need to call these people uh, so that you are, uh, because just an application in the mail, uh, look, appears a little cold. I mean, if you add a personal element to it, a personal touch to it, um, then, um, you know, you will have better chances at um, getting that job. And also it helps you uh, from not getting the uh, application delivered at wrong person steps if you have informed them. So then, you know, it will ensure that the application reaches the right person and not somebody <coughs> else who doesn't care about it or who doesn't uh, deal with this field, then probably your application might get lost. Uh, and unless you're sending it through an email, if you're sending it through a post, then it might go to a different person who doesn't get the same thing. And uh, nobody is there um, sitting in that specific position where they are very bothered about delivering your application. So you have to take all the measures to ensure that your application is written in the best way, presents you in the best way, reaches the right person, uh, gives the perfect energy along. Right? And what additional things can you do to make your application stand out or to make you stand out as an applicant? Uh, of course, your credentials and your personal traits, your social traits, your professional traits play the major role. But also these little things are of huge importance at times. 
Now, searching for a job. So the analysis, um, now we were talking about what the research that needs to go um, when you are applying for a job regarding, of course, the, the, the research is taking place at two levels. One is at the broader level where you are understanding what is happening in the that particular domain, in the market, in the economic sector, in the country, in the world, that's uh, that's research at a broader level, at a huge level. But there is also another level of research involved, the second type of research, that is about that particular company that you are applying for. What is happening there? What is the background? How much profit do they make? What are the challenges that they are facing? What is it that they are looking for? What is their current requirement? What is their net uh, value? Okay. Uh, what is the state of their equities? Uh, their equities and um, shares and uh, I mean how is it performing in the market and uh, what are the things which are of relevance to that particular company what can you contribute to that company in that particular scenario and what you think they might be looking for in an employee uh, right so now searching for a job and you do not uh, please remember that a lot of people uh, for example um, this is very important a lot of people, your application or your communication must not show arrogance. Okay? So a lot of people, what they do that uh, when I'm telling you to research, and then obviously you might find uh, certain things which are lacking with the company. So you do not go and write, you know, your company is going through losses or you, you, you are not performing well here, so I'm going to come and add this. Okay, that sounds pompous. Okay, That sounds insulting to the company or the organization. You are applying for this number, you are seeking that job, they will have other applicants. So, you are not supposed to hurt uh, their sentiments or their ego by pointing out how they are not performing well and how you are going to be an asset because that might or might not be true. With one person, uh, I mean, there are a lot of factors involved in the growth and success of a company or the failure of it. So, you do not have to while you are. Uh, putting yourself out there as a suitable candidate, you do not have to be loud and pompous about it and oversell yourself, uh, where you do not look like a perfect candidate, but you look like a person who is probably uh, mocking them. You know? So this is one thing that you need to be very careful. Keep your always remember that you are the person who is seeking the job. So do not make them feel like you are somebody who is going to oblige them. A lot of professionals they tend to do this mistake. Please don't do that. All right. Now, um, aim to track down the most relevant person and write their job titles, spell their name and designation correctly. Important. So, when uh, we talked about how you can probably, you know, call them, but a lot of people do not appreciate um, calling. Like, imagine if all the people who are applying for the job start calling the employers personally, they would be pretty harrowed about it, right? So, what you need to do is that you need to find out the name of the person, the most relevant person, um, write their job title. Always remember to spell their name and designation correctly. When we were talking earlier about how you can, um, you know, call people by their names, at that point also, please see that um, you must pronounce their names correctly. You know, you cannot mispronounce names, you cannot write wrong spellings. Okay? So, so that's there. Now, the spell their names and designations correctly. The tone and style of your letter should be yeah. convincing to the employer that you are highly committed and enthusiastic about the job you are applying for. Spell their names and designation correctly, first point. Pronounce their names correctly. If you do not know it, spellings you can easily find in the directory or in their company you know, um, website or to someone there but uh, when it comes to pronouncing the names people i mean in india at least we have so many places and so many languages uh, so many different regions with different dialects so all the pronunciations are pretty different so you need to know i mean with people coming from different cultural backgrounds you cannot go ahead and pronounce the names the way that you want it okay so you need to uh, learn how to pronounce ask them 
from going to be a, let's say, I'm, I mean, obviously you can't do that when you're applying for a job, you won't call the person and say that, hey, uh, you know, I'm applying for this job. So can you please tell me how you pronounce the name? That's not possible. That is a scenario when you are interacting with them. So let's say if you're, uh, um, you are addressing somebody with their name and you're not sure of the pronunciation, then you ask them, am I pronouncing your name correctly? I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing it right. So it's wrong. So if they tell you no, it's not like this. I'm so sorry. I, you know, I just corrected. And then you give it an attempt and you pronounce it correctly. Okay. But uh, that happens when you're in direct communication with the person. When you're writing a letter or an email, then your spellings matter. So thinking that you know English is not important in English communication or knowledge of English, whether it is in written form or spoken form. Um, that uh, is a very wrong assumption. You really need to work on your language skills. Let's say if you're applying in Hindi, then even in Hindi you need to, or any language for that matter, you need to have a proper command over that language, no matter which language it is. And since uh, we are applying mostly in English, so it is important that you have a good command over English, since it is the language which is being used uh, maximum in official cases. In official, uh, sector, then you need to have a good command of it, you cannot just do away with it. Your language, your communication plays uh, a huge role. When you write, that is the first impression that you make, how you are writing your email, how you are writing your letter. It is very important to not underestimate that um, by thinking that it's just another language. No matter, definitely it's just another language, but any language uh, that you are going to use for your communication how uh, fluent or how um, proficient you are with it makes a very good first impression, all right? So, uh, yeah, so that is there. We need to spell correctly. And uh, next point, sixth point is the tone and style of your letter should be convincing to the employer that you are highly committed and enthusiastic about the job you are applying for. So you cannot, uh, like what I said earlier, you know, your, your tone and style shouldn't be like you are obliging the employer by working for them. Remember that you are applying for the jobs and you are seeking the job. So uh, your tone and style has to be in sync with that. Okay? And it has to be uh, humble, it has to be polite, it has to be modest. And it has to be convincing. You need to tell them that uh, while you are not an arrogant person, you are uh, capable. Okay. So the challenge here is to prove your capability, not your um, not your arrogance, not your uh, confidence. Right. Uh, confidence or overconfidence for that matter. You are confident, that is good, um, but um, the, the confidence needs to have a solid uh, backing. You cannot be confident for nothing. You need to have certain credentials that you know, give you that confidence or um, which act as a proof or as a legitimate um, evidence that you are going to be a going to be a very suitable candidate for that particular role. So the tone and style of your letter should be convincing to the employer that you are highly committed and enthusiastic about the job you are applying for. Uh, next is if you want to discuss creative job hunting or receive feedback about your CV and cover letter. Last one, if you want to discuss creative job hunting or receive feedback about your CV and cover letter, feel free to speak to a career advisor or use an e-cutter. So, so what I'm trying to say here is that after doing all these things, which um, I've discussed with you right now, even after doing all these things, if you still feel a bit apprehensive or you feel like you would require an external support, so you um, can find someone who is a career counselor or someone who is an expert with doing this problem in HR deals with a lot of CVs. So you, you can always, uh, you know, what you need to for. You can also have a career advisor and there are also sort of e-guidance services available if there are uh, certain services like that available. 
then you can also seek help from them. And uh, while you're doing this research and analysis, like I said, that preparing a mind map, a graph, or um, any kind of pictorial representation, uh, it will always help you out, you know, uh, to make a better sense of what you're doing. And a deep research and analysis of the company will make you more aware of the situation that you are in and uh, obviously facilitate better judgments. Right? Now, unit second um, is searching for a job. Now, how do you, uh, I mean, we are discussing in unit two. Now, uh, section is how do you fill up a questionnaire? So, uh, in order to fill up a question, why do you fill up? That's the most important question. So what is the use of a questionnaire? Like you see some companies that even if they have taken your resume, they have uh, they will give you a certain questionnaire before they take you for the interview or after the interview, depends on them, uh, what they prefer. So what happens with the questionnaire? It gives you it gives you employers a quick bird eye view analysis and it helps evaluate candidates' personality, okay? So that's one thing. It helps evaluate candidates' personality. It gives a quick word I do analysis. Now, let's look at unit three. So when you see advertisements, how do you respond to these job interviews? and um, the advertisements that you get, how do you respond to the people? So we have spoken about where can we find the advertisements, um, how can we um, segregate, how can we filter these advertisements, how do we um, um, categorize these advertisements. We have spoken about all that and uh, how do we choose the best options out of these advertisements for us. But uh, an important thing is how do you respond to it? So in order to respond, you need to pay attention at certain basic questions. First of all, who put in the advertisement? Who, what is the person organization looking for? I mean, which organization or person has put in the advertisement? What are his credentials? Like I said that if you need to be asset to a company, the company also needs to be an uh, uh, an asset to you. It should add to your personal and professional growth. So you need to see there are questions that you need to ask you know, totally at the receiving end or at the mercy of the organization. You need to see that it is a mutual transaction that is taking place. You are contributing to the company and the company is contributing to you by through financial and uh, you know other means so you also need to you are also contributing to them financially by offering them uh, your services so a very important thing is who you can be advertisement okay what is the person or the organization looking for what skills are required uh, so uh, now let's say when we were talking about the creating the analysis, graph, charts, uh, mind maps. So you, that, that just simplifies the process. I mean, um, that's not the main thing that you need to uh, work on. I mean, after creating that organized set of information, the main task is to develop those qualities or to, um, to stand as a suitable candidate and to be up to the mark to the expected standards of a certain uh, organization. So uh, look at who is with the advertisement, are they reliable uh, people and what is the person or organization looking for? Okay, so that will obviously that will automatically come out when you do all that research which was um, we talked about the kind of research which would be general and broader in nature and second would be uh, specific, uh, specifically focused on the individual company and what are the skills that they might be looking for. So that creates data at a glance when you have all these pictorial representations and everything. 
So uh, there is normally a bit of information about the company in job ads that gives you an idea of what companies are looking for and what they expect. And in some cases, what are they willing to pay? Well, not always, but sometimes we'll get an idea so you can see if it uh, fits your expectation. So first step is to select advertising vehicle. Uh, subscribe concern newspapers or magazines. Make a list of internet sites for classified jobs. Step two is the scanning process. Scan the ads that experience and higher qualifications are needed. Okay. Step three is make a list of all relevant hiring companies and positions which are advertised. So you see it's not that easy. You just don't open the newspaper and apply. Okay. So there is a certain process that you need to undertake so that you are in a position to apply in a better way uh, more organized, more cordial way to the jobs which are best fit for you. So that was all for today and have a good day ahead. Thank you.